From an engine fire in Miami that sent these passengers running for safety, and a private plane that overshot one of the most dangerous airports in the world, to a Russian pilot who lost his landing gear while coming in for an emergency landing, and a Korean Airlines crash that ripped the belly of this Airbus A330, here are 10 plane landings that went horribly wrong. Emergency landings are every pilot's worst nightmare. Thankfully, they have years of training and know what to do when something goes wrong. On February 10th of 2020, a cargo plane was flying over Russia when something went wrong in the sky. It's unclear what exactly happened. All we know is the pilot needed to put her down immediately. Thankfully, there was a wide open dirt road and some guys waiting on the ground. Imagine the force it takes to snap a landing gear off a plane. That's why we think this was an emergency, and the pilot couldn't slow down enough. Luckily, those guys were standing nearby and were able to run and help him. It's unclear if the pilot radioed them or if they just happened to be in the area. Now came the grueling task of dragging that plane out of the field. Landing gears are the wheels that come down from the belly of the plane. Without them, the plane would skid along the runway, likely crashing and falling to pieces. As complicated as flying is, deploying your landing gear should be the most common sense step. 85-year-old Chris had been flying without issue for 50 years. On April 11th of 2015, he boarded his private Cessna plane for a routine flight. Everything was going fine until Chris tried to land. Yeah. Hopefully, there's no gear. Here's your, here's your first wreck. This guy's gonna wreck. He landed on no gear down. His props are all messed up. He's gonna crash. Thankfully, Chris got the plane back up. By some miracle, he flew 100 miles back home with damaged propellers. At least he had his landing gears out when he came down in Fort Lauderdale. It's not that Chris forgot to put the landing gears down. He was actually trying to abort the landing after he noticed he was coming in too fast. He waited too long to pull the gears back up and skidded along the runway. That uh, ear-piercing sound is both his propellers scraping across the pavement. Thankfully, Chris and his dog made it home in one piece. If you travel deep into the French Alps, you might just stumble upon what the History Channel calls the seventh most dangerous airport in the world. Courchevel Alteport is a small facility servicing the Courchevel Ski Resort in the French Alps. It features a 1,700-foot sloping runway with no lights. As you can imagine, landing is extremely difficult. On February 8th of 2019, a private pilot learned that lesson the hard way while approaching Courchevel Altaport. His Piper Malibu came in too fast, leaving him with little room to slow down. Of all the things you could crash into, a pile of snow is one of your better options. That doesn't mean it's a soft landing, though. The trick to landing at Courchevel is to touch down on the first third of the runway. The middle third is an uphill climb, which helps slow the plane. Ideally, you've slowed enough to stop when you reach the final third of the runway. According to a report, the 23-year-old captain was a freelance pilot who obtained his license two and a half years earlier. He had recently completed the training required to land at Courchevel as a freelancer. He had only flown for 10 cumulative hours in the months leading up to the accident. It sounds like someone tried to shake the rust off by sticking two feet in the fire. Picture this. You're flying your private plane over the Florida Everglades when something goes wrong with your engine. Unfortunately, the only place you can land is an area called Shark Valley. 
While you won't find any sharks, a few alligators might be lurking around. In 2014, a private pilot and his crew found themselves in this exact situation. Thankfully, everybody on board remained calm under pressure. While the men up front focused on landing the plane, their buddy in the back kept the camera rolling. Thankfully, all three men walked away from the wreck without injury. According to the FAA, all three were fully licensed pilots. Their training likely saved their lives that day. Coincidentally, they had just completed a training exercise and were returning to Tamiami Airport. They weren't too far when their engine suddenly failed. Left with no choice, they put the plane down in the Everglades. Luckily, they landed near a paved road full of tour buses and bikers. It didn't take long for someone to walk by and ask, what the heck happened? To clap or not to clap, that is the question. Some people do it instinctively. Others find those people incredibly annoying. But if you must clap, at least wait for the plane to stop in front of the gate. Early clapping is a surefire way to jinx the pilot. Bravo Airways flight Bay 4406 was full of these so-called early clappers. The plane had left Antalya, Turkey en route to Kyiv, Ukraine. A thunderstorm formed as the aircraft approached Kyiv International. The conditions weren't great, but the crew knew how to handle them. They expected a rough landing, just not this rough. That, ladies and gentlemen, is why you wait for the plane to stop safely before clapping. Thankfully, none of the passengers or crew were injured as the cabin filled with smoke. As the story goes, the crew tried to keep everyone calm in their seats. The passengers ignored that request and scrambled for the nearest emergency exit. Two thousand fifteen was a bad year to be on a Turkish airplane. A string of accidents and emergency landings forced Turkish Airlines to divert and recall several flights. One of those accidents occurred on April 25th during a routine flight from Italy to Istanbul. Turkish Airlines Flight 1878 had 102 passengers and crew aboard when it attempted to land at Atatürk Airport in Istanbul. They were coming from Milan, Italy, which is about a three-hour non-stop flight. Everything was going fine right up until the end. What you just saw was the second attempted landing in Istanbul. The plane originally touched down at 10.23 local time, 
It rolled right and landed hard on the starboard gear. The wings struck the runway, causing significant damage and a ruptured fuel line. The pilot initiated a go-around. They climbed to 3,800 feet and tried landing again. That's when passengers noticed a fire in the starboard engine. When they touched down again, the right landing gear collapsed, causing the plane to spin out. Thankfully, everyone made it off the plane safely. Red Air is a low-cost airline operating out of the Dominican Republic. They were founded in 2020 as a joint venture between a Venezuelan airline and another Dominican company. Unfortunately, their first few years didn't get off to a good start. On June 20th of 2022, a routine flight from Santo Domingo to Miami-Dade International Airport almost ended in tragedy. A Red Air flight carrying 126 passengers and crew came in for a landing. That's when their nose landing gear collapsed, causing the plane to skid to an abrupt stop. Just when things couldn't get any worse, a fire started in the right engine. Thankfully, airport fire and rescue teams were on standby in case something like this occurred. Everyone made it off the plane safely, and only three people were treated for minor injuries. Ultimately, it could have been much, much worse. According to reports, the front tire popped when the plane landed. That caused the plane to bounce and come down hard on the bare landing gear. It was destroyed immediately, resulting in the plane's belly scraping across the ground. It collided with a tower crane as it skidded off the runway, which could have been the source of the fire. As of now, the cause of the crash is still under investigation. LATAM Airlines is part of the largest airline holding group in Latin America. They operate primarily out of Santiago, Chile, but also have hubs in Peru, Colombia, and Brazil. On July 12th of 2023, LATAM flight LA-3300 left an airport in Sao Paulo, Brazil for a quick 90-minute flight to Santa Catarina Island. CCTV cameras were rolling outside the airport when the plane skidded on the runway and landed in the grass. It's not the best CCTV footage in the world, but you can see where the plane veers left and comes to a stop. The pilot knew they were in trouble, so he activated the rear thrusters to slow the plane as much as possible. Little did he know, his landing gear was stuck in a hole. Did you see that? The right landing gear actually collapsed through the runway's hard shoulder, which, funny enough, is softer than the main landing strip. A couple of aftermath pictures really put things into perspective. You can see the plane stuck with the front half in the grass and the back half on the tarmac. Close-up shots on the tire really show how jammed it was on the giant pothole. Thankfully, all 172 passengers and crew members made it off the plane via the emergency slides and were cleared by medical teams. It's unclear what exactly caused the skid, but we suspect the slick runway had something to do with it. Lion Air is a low-cost airline operating out of Jakarta, Indonesia. They're the largest privately owned airline in the country and the second largest low-cost airline in Southeast Asia. But that doesn't mean they're the best. In fact, they're the worst. They have amassed 15 serious accidents since they began flying in 1999. They added one more to the list on February 16th of 2019, when a Lion Air Boeing 737 skidded off a wet runway. Just be happy you weren't on this cheap flight.
Unfortunately, we miss the moment when the plane actually leaves the runway. Our cameraman probably dropped his phone to cover his head. The plane left Jakarta Airport around 2 p.m. local time. It flew roughly 500 miles before attempting to land at the regional airport in Pontianak. That's when it began downpouring, turning the runway into a slip and slide. Thankfully, everybody walked away unharmed. But because the plane was stuck in the mud, the airport had to close the runway and cancel several other flights. Everybody aboard Korean Air Flight 631 will tell you the same harrowing story. They gripped their seats, held their loved ones, and feared for their lives as their plane overshot the runway and crashed near the airport boundary. It was October 23rd of 2022. About 170 passengers and crew climbed aboard a 24-year-old Airbus A330 in Seoul, South Korea. They were en route to Cebu in the Philippines, which should have been an easy four-hour flight. Then, something went wrong during their final approach. Poor conditions prevented them from making a safe landing. The pilot initiated a go-around and tried again. He almost had the plane down when a sudden downdraft affected the landing. One of the landing gears hit hard, causing some minor damage. The captain took her back up to 5,000 feet and entered a 25-minute holding period. The crew informed frightened passengers that the plane was experiencing a technical problem. It was going to be a rocky landing. Flight 631 attempted their third and final landing nearly an hour after the first go-around. The pilot touched down, but was unable to stop the plane in time. They overshot the landing strip, crashed through a lighting array, and stopped about a thousand feet into the grass. According to reports, other pilots chose to divert from Cebu Airport because of the poor conditions. It left many wondering why these pilots chose to land in the first place. As bad as it looks, nobody got hurt during the crash. The airline set the passengers up in hotels and arranged alternative flights to get everyone home. If you enjoyed this video and want to see another just like it, then be sure to click the link on screen now. As always, thanks for watching and be sure to tune in next time.